Hey guys, Hugh Shang here. Welcome to another StarCraft 2 Protoss Builder Guide. We haven't done too many of these recently, but that's because I haven't had any sick Builder Guides for you. But today I do have a sick build loader. It's a 3-gate Oracle build loader. Um, and this build loader is actually super hyper aggressive, which I like. So it's going to be a ton of fun. We're going to check out a example replay against the AI. And then after we've kind of done sort of like the basic template, we're going to be checking out three replays I have against some top GMs. So one is against a 5200, kind of on the lower end, um, but actually about 100 GM. And then I have a game against Zero, who is 5600, which is in the top 50. And then I also have a game against a top 10 GM. Um, I'm not sure who this is. Chum job. <laughs> I think it might be Vindicta or, uh, or someone else that's quite high GM. Not sure exactly, but they were very good. So we're going to check out all those example replays. Um, but first, let's just check out the template against the eye and get you kind of set up with the uh, basic idea of the strategy. All right, it's time. Let's check it out. So first thing you want to do is start some probes, obviously. And we're going to probe up till 14, and then we're going to be making our pylon. Obviously, if you're like masters, this is a, a bit redundant. You've been doing this for like 10 years. But uh, for everyone else, grab your pylon on 14. We're watching the supply here, the green supply. Red supply is my Terran opponent, which is an AI just because we're going to be doing the template here. And then later on, we'll uh, check out some replays, like I said earlier. So, gateway on 16 supply. And then you can scout. And then I'm also going to be grabbing my gas on 16. I think this is a bit better because you can fill the gas faster. Chrono boost. And then there's a little bit of downtime here. You could set up your camera hotkeys if you want, like this. Or you could... Uh, Micro your probes if you're a tryhard, or maybe adjust your music. I don't know. Once you can reach 16, you're gonna rally into gas, and then you're gonna chrono boost again. So, lots of probes going into, or lots of chrono boost going into probes here. But there's no real danger. Your probes gonna pick up on um, whether your opponent's cheesing you or not. We'll focus more on the scouting in the uh, replays examples that I'm gonna show you guys later. For now, you'll go 21 cybercore. And then you're going to actually cut the probes once you reach 16 on minerals and 3 in gas. So this is like optimal saturation. There's nowhere efficient to put our probes from now on. So instead we're going to cut them. Build the nexus on 21. Also build the pylon on 21. And then lastly we're also going to build the gas on 21. So there's a probe cut there for the nexus, the pylon, and the gas. And then once you get all three of those you can resume the probes. And then you're going to be focusing on the gateway. You're going to make an adept. You could also go stalker, but this build requires so much gas that it's a bit more efficient if you go for the adept. Chrono boost that. And then you're going to be going for a stargate before you get warp gate. Okay. And then we're going to go for a second adept. Sometimes you want this adept to stay at home, like if you're playing against Reaper. Sometimes you'll want it to go across the map if you're playing against Marine. So that's kind of nice to know. If you don't really know, you could just hang out over here. That's fine too. You don't like need to get damage with the Adept. Um, but this is an aggressive build. So it does help if you can, you know, uh, force some mistakes to your opponent early or like pick off a Marine or something like that. And then after the second Adept, you're going to go Warp Gate. Okay, Nexus finishes. Make sure you start probes here right away when the Nexus finishes. I see a lot of students don't do that, and it's kind of big, kind of a big deal. So make sure you're spamming probes. Next up, we'll go for the Oracle as soon as the Stargate's finished, and then Chrono Boost it. And then after you've made the Oracle, you can go Double Gate. Just again, make sure you're not cutting probes here. Okay, after the gates, with the same probe, you're going to send it across the map. You could also do this earlier, like... Um, if I'm playing against a Reaper, I probably won't set it out like this because it's likely to get caught. Um, you could just have it kind of sit here after this scout if you want. But either way, you're going to build a pylon. And you're going to build a second oracle. And you're going to chrono boost your warp gate. So there's only one chrono boost in the warp gate. And there's one chrono boost in the first oracle. And then you're pretty much broke on the chrono boost front. So just make sure you don't chrono the second oracle twice. 
because that's going to slow down your um, warp gate attack. And then we can make a uh, pylon over here, like I said. So we're kind of just prepping for this uh, warp in, basically. So we can warp in over here instead of over here. And then in the meantime, while you're waiting for that, you can kind of do a little bit of harass with the first oracle, or if you want, you can just like scout up what they're doing with the uh, revelation. Basically, we're kind of waiting for the first warp in and um, the second oracle, so there's not too much to do on that front. Um, and then you're also going to drop one additional pylon. You kind of need one more pylon for um, for the warp in, so just make sure you drop um, the proxy pylon and then an extra one as well. And you'll easily have enough money for the uh, uh, the gateway warp in, so it's not like a problem mineral wise to to double pylon like that. Shade across the map when you can. As soon as your warp gates are done, you're gonna warp in at this pylon. So you should just be spamming the warp ins. Bam, three more adepts. Stalkers are also possible, but I think it's a little bit stronger if you go for adepts because you're comboing the uh, the oracles with the um, adepts and they just kind of balance each other out um, mineral gas wise but I have been going stalkers and zealots as well I'm not really sure what the best is I've only been doing this build for like two weeks but it's been smashing either way <laughs> so maybe try out both but I think adepts are probably better also adepts are kind of nice because you can shade past a potential bunker right if you have a bunker here you can shade in over here oracles can swing in through the air and then you can actually like basically bypass their bunker which is pretty sweet so that's the plan here um, and I forgot to mention there's a third oracle as well as soon as the second one was done I queued that up um, and then don't forget as you're doing this attack you want to be making pylons every so often um, and you can also sneak in your nexus right because it's not really an all-in here we're kind of just pressuring so we shade in and then we combo that with um, our oracles here and a lot of the times it just ends the game if your opponent's not super prepped for this there's also the potential if your opponent does have a bunch of units here like let's say they're playing really defensive against stargate and they go adept cyclone viking you can oftentimes actually just split up the attack like your adepts kind of fake an attack over here and your oracles come in the main so there's tons of potential with this attack it's really actually quite hard for the opponent to defend as you're going to see in the example replays and uh, you should pretty often get major damage here and just win the game so that is the basic builder and now we're going to start checking out some example replays i have three so there is uh plenty more stuff to check out let's do that now all right so here's my first example game this one is actually against zero i was going to show you guys the 5200 game first but it's a little bit non-standard so i think this one's actually a little bit better to lead with um but this is against a pretty strong player who beats me quite often actually um but not since i found this sick bill litter i'm like three and oh <laughs> so let's check it out let's start here i think we can kind of ignore the opening uh portion of the bill loader and instead we'll just focus on um what this probe is scouting so we did a gate scout here i think we come in we see one gas and we don't see a second gas so that's quite important we've already kind of picked up that he's most likely going for the expansion and then all we need to do from now is just confirm that he actually has that um what are you doing mr probe we gotta get out of here man a little bit uh late on the exit we're probably gonna die to this reaper but at least we scout the uh expansion here and um yeah so now we know that he's playing standard and we can just basically do the builder like i showed you against ai uh without fear of getting uh cheesed so, but if you don't see this expansion, you might be a little more worried and maybe grab like a shield battery or something. Okay, but in this game, we're fine. So we go for the Adept and then we're going to be going for, um, oh, it looks like we grabbed a Warp Gate this game. Usually I go Stargate first. I think I've been testing out different stuff. I think Stargate is much better though. So Warp Gate, Stargate, second Adept. You can see we're kind of dealing with a Reaper this game. So it's going to be a little bit harder to, um, to go for pressure unless we're able to kill that reaper then we can kind of go across the map and uh get some stuff done but for now i'm just kind of playing defense you can see i'm trying to go for my probe i'll just do like a shift q here is what i like and then you can really focus on killing that reaper which we will get he gets a probe but um i think overall that was like pretty even like he saw my uh tech 
and he got a probe so maybe even slightly better for him but in exchange we're gonna get this nice um adept pressure so you can see me running across the map and you can see i'm making the oracle i'm making the double gate and then i should be proxying my pylon very fairly soon uh so we can get this aggression going now this might be too much for most people because it's almost too much for me <laughs> but if you can get some early damage done with these first couple of depths, if your opponent lets you across the map, it actually does kind of snowball pretty well. Um, because when you do your later attack, you've um, kind of whittled down these marines. So I think this is quite powerful here, just trading these adepts for um, some marines, even an SCV, which is a bonus. And then we have the proxy pylon finished. We have this oracle flying in, second oracle on the way. I think overall this builder is actually quite um, messy. You can tell I haven't been playing this builder for very long. And I think we might even lose this oracle. So I mean, this is like not the best game. We had the probe kind of late, we had the oracle get killed off. Um, but even still, you guys are going to see this builder is crazy. <laughs> so I'm going for some stalkers this game. We've got the oracle, the, the second oracle coming across. Um, I think also you can see like why it's better with the Adept because they don't quite have enough money to go for that third Oracle that I said um, we should get in the example replay. Instead I'm going for some Stalkers and only two Oracle because that's all I can afford. And then I'm going to run in here and we're just going to go for his uh, Marines. This is an easy fight. And the reason this is so easy is because he skipped his bunker um, and also because he had his uh, Cyclone Viking in the main. Which he has to do, by the way, because if he doesn't put them in the main, then this Oracle could be coming in the main and killing a bunch of worker. So it's actually a pretty difficult defense for Terran. Um, even if he did make a bunker and we went for the Adepts, we can shade through that. And already this game is, like, pretty much over. In fact, I think if I just ran up the ramp here, or uh, warped in, like, another three units, he is just completely dead. So, there, even though I'm kind of owning this 5600 <laughs> with this new build order, I feel like there's another 25% more in this build order um, than I'm actually using right now. I'm using like 70% of the power right here, or maybe even less than that. Um, but even still, we're getting this insane advantage. Like, it's 50 worker to 35. The game is pretty much over. All we need to do now is just uh, close it out. So, you don't really want to go for Colossus, obviously, because we don't have a Robo. So it's going to take way too long to get to that setup. Instead, what you're going to want to do is be going for like a gateway transition. Um, oftentimes, what it'll do is go charge. In this game, I was experimenting a little bit with blink. Um, I don't think it's actually as good. I think charge is better because you have the Stargate anyways. And so it's actually pretty easy to transition into uh, charge lot Phoenix, where you don't need to um, invest in the blink, which is kind of slow. And then you don't have a lot of power with the, um, the charge lots. So I think I'm erring on the side of the uh, charge lot transition. But uh, this game I went for blank, and because their lead is so good, it's kind of okay. It kind of doesn't really make a difference here. So he's setting up for like a really uh, standard timing here, where he's just going to build a bunch of uh, bio, plus wood of mine, plus uh, some medevac. I think that was partially the reason I went blink, by the way, is because he doesn't have a lot of um, uh, siege tank. So blink stalkers are definitely better if your opponent doesn't make siege tanks. Sorry, just drinking some water here. <laughs> okay, so we have like three sentry, a couple of zealot. Super late forge, by the way. The reason for that is because you put on so much pressure, you can't really um, get like the normal amount of tech and survive. So you kind of want to cut your forge in favor of the gateways. And then, and then you have a lot more units for this uh, defense. So... I mean, just looking at this army, you can see there is no chance. <laughs> this is completely one-sided. I am being careful just because of the Widow Mine, but um, realistically, this is uh, GG immediately. I thought I would have activated that second Widow Mine, so it wasn't quite as good as I thought there, but um, good enough considering our lead. And zero taps out. So, pretty simple. Game one. Next game is a little more uh, cheesy. So let's get into that. 
Alright guys, this game is a little bit crazier than the first one, <laughs> so um, I think I think this one is um, a good example of changing the builder, altering it slightly because of the situation. And uh, this guy goes for a super hyper aggressive opening, so we can't just do exactly what I showed you in the template. If you guys are playing against certain things, you definitely want to make some slight alterations, but the basic idea is still the same, right? Like the principle of the Oracle plus gateway attack before you um, tech up is still going to be exactly the same. So we come in here with the probe. We see, first of all, there's no racks here. The Terran forgot their racks. Oh my god, they're such a noob. They just totally forgot their barracks. No, of course not. Don't let your hubris take over. <laughs> um, obviously, he's proxied it somewhere. So I'm looking around his base. Man, I can't tell you guys how many games I lost when I was like Gold League coming up through the StarCraft ranks and I was like, oh man, my opponent's a fucking idiot. He just didn't even make his barracks. Easy dub. And then boom, two barracks over here. So yeah, make sure we're playing safe. Basically the alteration we made is we uh, made a zealot and now we're going to be safe against like a proxy reaper. So you can just kind of like keep that around your, um, your base. And then you go for a gateway unit. In this case, I'm going to go Adept because then again, we can afford the Stargate a little bit cheaper. Um, I think in this situation, it is appropriate though to go for the Warp Gate first instead of the Stargate. Um, and we're also delaying this um, this gas quite a bit because we had to make um, uh, the Zealot. So yeah, some alterations here, but generally we're on the same track, right? Like we're going for the Adepts and then we're going for the, um, the Stargate. Also, I made a shield butter here because I, I wasn't really sure what was going on. I thought it might have been the um, proxy marauder build because there was no reapers showing up. Uh, but now they've arrived. And this is going to be quite annoying. But on the flip side, our opponent's kind of investing a lot into this. So, you know, if we take a little bit of probe damage, it's okay. Soon I should be grabbing that Stargate. You can see it's way later than the example template, right? But again, that's totally fine because we're dealing with this attack. And as long as we deal with the stack efficiently and then go into our, our game plan when we're allowed to, it's going to be fine. So I eventually throw on the Stargate. Um, and I realized kind of late that it would be really sick if I had a shield battery in the main because then I wouldn't have to play uh, Ring Around the Rosie too much. So I'm finally getting that now. Oh, this was pretty sick by my opponent. He kind of owned me here. Um, <laughs> I thought we could definitely get one Reaper, but he um, tossed those grenades really well and um, snuck out with an Adept kill. But uh, no matter, we only lost one probe and one adept. So I think overall this defense was um, in my favor. And at this point we've kind of defended, right? Like we got the shield battery up. He's trying to kill it, but um, if he goes for it, he's going to lose a reaper. So he has to run away. And at this point our oracle is starting. And once we get that oracle, it's pretty much game over um, for these reapers. Maybe not game over in the grand scheme, but definitely these reapers are... Uh, are losing their value so he's kind of got to find some damage here and now that I kind of realize okay his attack is pretty much over I'm gonna start adding my gates soon and then we're gonna go for the attack especially in this game it's gonna be pretty awesome because he's wasted so much time with these um, Reapers right so our gateway attack should be a little bit stronger even last Reaper goes down toss down these gates Actually, surprised I didn't get them already. I guess we didn't have any money because we were building the um, we were building a lot more uh, units than normal. Four adept here instead of um, two. But okay, here the gates come down, and now we're just gonna kind of poke across the map and see what he's up to. So he's gone for a pretty greedy setup, which is really common at my MMR. I don't know if this is common um, at every MMR, but um, at my MMR, a lot of people are skipping this bunker, and I think that's one of the main reasons this build is so disgusting right now. Is because people see Stargate builds and they think, oh man, this guy's just going to go into a third base and uh, not attack me forever, like Blink builds. So I don't need any defense. But uh, little do they know, this build's going to be storming the GM ladder soon because it's so disgusting. <laughs> okay, so we run across the map. I'm going to go for the uh, main this game, which is another thing you can do with these oracles. You don't have to go for the natural, which is part of this build's power. I missed this uh, Cyclone. I would have went for that earlier if I saw it, um, but he runs it back now, and as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh man, that's incredibly dead. And I have two Oracle versus one Cyclone. A little bit of missed micro, should have got that without the Oracle death, um, but either way, I think that's a pretty big pickoff. It's going to make our Adept attack quite a bit stronger, 
And of course we do have the second oracle showing up as well. It looks like this game I even tried to go for a fourth oracle, which is um, madness. <laughs> but okay, we see a bunch of marines. He actually went for a tank, which I think is a big problem actually. And um, quite common is people just don't really know what you're up to. So they go for a siege tank. And the siege tank really doesn't help with this attack. It's kind of useless. So lots of adept warping in. You can see I went for a couple more rounds than the last game. Like this build is a lot more flexible or builds in general are a lot more flexible than they seem. But anyways, we shade in. We've got the Oracle supporting. And yeah, Adepts plus Oracle are both insane against Marine and against Worker. So when this attack is over, we do lose all the Oracles. But in exchange, I think we kill like 20 Workers plus some Marines. So no doubt this is in our favor here. And um, the game is completely over, I would say. All we really have to do is just um, close it out. So you can see me going for the uh, Twilight Transition. But at the same time, I figured oh, we can probably just continue going for some aggression here. I think in both of these games, by the way, I could have just went up the ramp and won the game. But I was not confident in um, being able to kill him. I thought maybe, you know, there's a Widow Mine up here or like a Siege Tank or something. Um, but in retrospect, I think I need to start being a little more aggressive up this ramp. Okay, and then like before, you can see I'm really delaying the Forge. Again, this is a super aggressive build, so you can't really be too focused on, you know, getting everything you dream of. Instead of getting the Forge, we're going to go for a fast charge. We're going to be building um, Phoenix in this game. And then you're going to be adding on a bunch of gateways. So I started with six here, but pretty soon I'll go up to eight as well. And then we're just going to spam units and uh, just make sure we can hold on to this counterattack. That's kind of inevitable. And then once you do that, the game's pretty much over. So you don't really need to worry too much about the, um, the upgrades. You can just kind of add a forge after you get eight gates, which is probably what I'll do here soon. I don't remember this game too uh, exactly, um, but I would imagine I'm going to get a forge soon after eight gates, and then I'm going to, um, yeah, start like a pretty late plus one upgrade, armor or uh, attack. Okay, here he comes with this push. Pretty tiny push compared to most uh, Terran games, but that's because we killed like 10 marine here. So... It's kind of a pathetic little <laughs> force here. It's got the upgrades, but I mean, not very many units, right? So now I just have to um, pick up this one Widow Mine. And then from there, it's pretty much over. Like, Marines really have a hard time against Phoenix. Maybe I could have even picked up some of these Marines instead of the uh, Medivac. But either way, this is a pretty, um, pretty easy fight overall, I think. Just don't run into Widow Mines. Like, if you have to pull back, pull back. But, yeah, we're just pretty confident here because of the early game. So, we clean this up, and I think he probably taps out pretty soon here. There we go. GG. Okay, I have one more game for you guys. It's against a super high GM Terran. Top 10 right now. So, let's check that out. All right, I've got one more replay to show you guys. One more example game. This one is against a double gas opening, so it's a little bit different as well. We're going to make some adjustments just like game two. So you, again, you guys don't have to be too strict on the builder. It's just like a way to optimize um, the attack, right? Like the basic idea is just Oracle plus gateway units. Okay, so we go for a scout on uh, gas this game. And as you can see, my turn opponent here, Chum Job. No idea who this is, but he's uh, he's pretty good. I don't know. Maybe this is um, Euthermal or maybe this is a Vindicta. Someone very, very strong for sure. Um, so we, we scout the double gas here. And I mean, this probe is dead now. He's trapped. You don't really want to recall it because uh, you only have one Chrono Boost. And you kind of need that for the uh, Adept. But yeah, his life was well served. <laughs> he's going to scout the factory at least. And he's going to scout that there's not a lot of... Um, workers on the gas and he's also going to scout the reaper so from this position here you can basically assume you're playing uh, against like a reaper hellion pressure build could be like three reaper two hellion could be two reaper hellion um there's a bunch of different setups he could even go like just one reaper into reactor but we know that he's playing like an aggressive setup right and so the way you want to respond to this is you want to chrono a bunch of adepts and you want to get a shield battery in the main um I, I play this a little bit inaccurately, but in general, this should keep you pretty safe. And then you can go for your Stargate like normal, and it's not, you know, too big of a difference. 
And then you can see I'm trying to uh, set up to kill this Reaper. Now, ideally, I think what I should have done is um, had this second adept rallied down to the natural ASAP because I don't have to worry too much about the main since we got this shield battery. Um, but what I did instead is I had this adept come over here to um, potentially kill the Reaper Scout. And uh, yeah, that ends up being a little bit of an inaccuracy here. So, shield better at the natural as well. I don't think you need this. Especially if you have the two adept here. So, I might not make that in the future. Um, but, if you want to grab that for like extra safety, I think that's fine. And yeah, this ends up being a little bit of a mistake. Because um, with two adept at the front here, I could have easily defended this. He would have just ran away, I think. Um, but with only one adept here, he's going to go after it. And uh, yeah, that was scary. That is quite scary here. We lose the first adept. Um, but luckily, the show battery finishes and we don't lose like too, too much. I think he's killed like two probes here. And then we have the shield battery in the main, so we're not going to take any damage there. But um, yeah, definitely a little bit of a sloppy opening from me. Not perfectly ideal. I can't believe I let that uh, <laughs> Reaper get out as well. So yeah, not, not the best defense so far. Uh, but from here on out, we're going to go back into our normal setup, right? So we got the Oracle finishing. Second Oracle on the way. Grab the double uh, gateways. And you can see here why I don't want this shield battery because I could grab these gateways much faster if I didn't make that. But let's see how this counterattack goes. I think adepts against these double gas openings are, are disgusting. I think you kind of need to do them instead of stalker. And um, yeah, I mean the, the oracle plus the double adept is just so good here. Imagine if we had three adept as well. So we kill a bunch of units. Pretty even trade overall I think because his cyclone popped out. Um... But I'm going to back up here. At least I have some info, right? He went for Viking Cyclone. So he's likely going to be doing this sort of like 1-1-1 one, one, one aggression. Not going into his fast double racks. And so what I'm going to do this game is play it a lot more conservatively, actually. Especially since that first trade didn't go amazing. So I'm going to chill. I'm going to grab my uh, third Nexus here. And I'm going to just kind of warp in defensively. Keep in mind that like whenever they open double gas, they do have more units than normal as well. So that's part of um, what I'm factoring in here. So he comes and pressures me. You know, he's he's probably used to a lot of pros who are very greedy and go for like, you know, the Twilight and the Forge already. And so this type of pressure is really strong for Terran as well. Um, but you can see with this build, like you can kind of jump on it with your um, Oracle Gateway unit and um, take some pretty good trades. I think we're kind of slugging back and forth pretty evenly here. Although, maybe it's argued, like, right now he's taking a slight lead. Let's see. Yeah, resource loss were, like, pretty neck and neck, actually. So, yeah, pretty pretty even overall. He's got this medevac drop coming in. I did lose my oracles, I think. So, yeah, maybe he's, like, slightly winning right now. But now we're going to see the power of this, uh, this gateway pressure. So, he's kind of doing, like, the equivalent of my build, I would say. He's got his little drop going on. We've got some stalkers warping in. And um, and now we've got this gateway attack going on. So I kind of have to split my units here. Some with the defense and some with the aggression here. But we have the uh, Oracle come in. We snipe the Cyclone. And now we're just going to be picking off as many workers as we can. Now keep in mind that we're both like multitasking here. <laughs> so this is not perfect micro by any means. Things are getting crazy. In fact, maybe I'll go to my vision here and show you guys. Like we're kind of kiting and defending at the same time. Same as this guy. It's just super back and forth on both ends. So very difficult multitasking situation. Um, but I think we kind of come out on top here in the end. I'll check out the uh, workers lost after this. But we defend a little bit and we're getting our uh, tech coming in. And then we're kind of killing as many workers as we can at the same time. So a very, very hectic situation. But I think this is a good example of kind of how do you... Um, Play, the, play this builder when it doesn't go perfectly, right? Very, very fun. I Actually, at this point in the game, we're not like winning, but I was thinking, oh man, this, this builder is the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> because this game was uh, super exciting. Like, there's tons of attacking back and forth, defending, and um, yeah, this, this game was just a ton of fun to play, even though it uh, didn't go amazing early game. And uh, yeah, so now we're into like the... Uh, the mid game phase, he's got a tank, so I can't really keep pushing there. Um, and we're just going to go into like a charge at Archon setup, just like we did in the uh, previous game. I actually get like a pretty amazing position from here, and then I throw it. <laughs> if 
But um, I think we'll stop here because uh, the purpose of this video is just to go over the opening. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you do this on ladder, you're going to be crushing everybody, I would assume. I think even this game we should have been crushing, but we made some micro mistakes over here and, and such. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this build order guide. If you did, make sure to like the video. Um, if you still want some help after playing this build order, make sure to uh, get some coaching from me on my website. And with that, I think we're done with the video, so uh, I will see you in the next one.